Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Blight Chronicles Agent Decker. It is by Board and Dice. Blight Chronicles Agent Decker is a solo driven story campaign game in which you're going to be playing as Agent Decker and you're going to be attempting to uh, as a cybernetically designed human being, find this missing scientist. And of course, there's multiple missions and objectives you can to partake in. And as you progress through the game, you're going to get options as to how you want to play the game. Now, the game is a basic deck builder in the sense that you're going to be uh, fighting against these alarms and traps and whatnot that come across. And as you defeat them, you'll have the ability to either put them back into your deck to use as a deck building app option or to get rid of completely. And your objective is to stay as low on the submission uh, suspicion track as possible and be as non-visible as possible as well. You're going to be given the opportunity to, to stop traps and whatnot, and if you're really good, you can stop them way before they begin. But as you build your deck, you're going to be able to do certain things and uh, trying to avoid that suspicion aspect. The game is, is basically story-driven in the fact that there's a plethora of different options for different campaigns you can go on. And in this one, specifically uh, for my prototype, we have actually three uh, different story modes with Two, uh, two options for each of them, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like in more detail and all the com components of the game. So here we have all the components for Blight Chronicles Agent Decker. And as you can see, it comes with a ton of different cards and card decks, along with a bunch of tokens and then your own player board. And these are stages over here. Now you're gonna get um, even more stages than this. This is a prototype, so it only shows you from one to three C, but in the actual game, it has all the way up to seven stages with tons of different options to choose which stage you wanna go through after you've completed one, you'll have the option to do that. This here is your player deck, which is gonna come with all of your starting cards. This is your level two cards, which you'll be able to get at certain points throughout the game. As you complete a stage, you might let you ch uh, level up and choose one of the level two cards. These here are going to be decks, and on the side, the top right-hand side, is going to be an icon that is going to indicate the deck type. When you start with your stage, so we're going to start with stage one, then you're going to actually get all of the cards represented on the top left-hand corner here. So you'd need all the gate cards, you would need all the shield cards, and you would need all the camera cards cards. The rest of the cards are going to be removed until a later stage comes into play. Now, also, you're going to do whatever it says on the before, which is place one of these, uh, one of the guard cards right here in this mark one area. So first mark, so put it right there. And this is going to be the uh, deck, so obstacle deck. Okay, so that is there, and you're also going to need suspicion marker, which is going to start on your zero, and of course your visibility, which is going to go progressively as high as well. You're going to have slots for where the different obstacles are going to come, and then they're going to hit into the uh, agent area over here of the avoided obstacles, as well as your agent discard pile and your agent deck. This is where you'll be playing cards, and it gives you everything you need there. It's also going to come with this box here, as well as it's going to come with a rule book for how to play the game. So to begin the game, you're going to start with a deck of eight cards, and you're going to draw four of those cards. You're going to make sure the entire board is set up, which I'll show you below in a second here. And you're also going to make sure that you have the obstacle deck set up based on the stage. The stage will tell you which obstacles you need to put into the obstacle deck, as well as any of the special startups in the game. For instance, for this one, we're going to actually have the guard house, and it's going to say when you defeat this, you're going to gain a star. And from that point, you're going to actually look at the stage, and it'll tell you, okay, when you uh, capture the star, the star, you can go ahead and discard this certain thing to have happen and you can jump over the fence and then you've gotten into the facility and you were to continue from there choosing different options and whatnot and it functions similarly to a solitaire style deck building game in which characters and surveillance cameras and all these other kind of crazy things are going to move across the board and you're going to be drawing cards and playing cards on them to try and stop them from getting to the um the obstacles pile like basically there's gonna be six different obstacles and if they get to the end there it's gonna be nasty stuff that happens to you suspicion is going to mount invisibility is going to increase and you don't want that because the game is going to trail over from each and every different stage to increase so the more the more you increase the early rounds the harder it's gonna be in the later rounds of the game and then you're gonna just continue doing that drawing cards playing against them the boards gonna be moving across all while at the same time things are gonna trigger and activate and uh, funny like little interesting aspects are going to occur let me go ahead and show you the game a couple turns of it 
and how did you set it up so you can see what it looks like? All right, so I've went ahead and set up the game. All you're gonna need to do is take out all the other stages that are not uh, gonna be needed. For instance, we're gonna start with get in, and then you're gonna perform all the different things it requires you to do, such as putting this thing here, the guard house, as well as the, the obstacle deck. Make sure you shuffle it and then deal out six cards all the way from slot one to slot six, and then having your agent deck, which is gonna start you with, off with eight cards. You're gonna shuffle that deck up and draw four of them and put it here. You won't need any of the other obstacles for this specific scenario, so you're gonna move those aside, as well as your level two cards, which you're gonna be able to unlock throughout the stages, so you can move that aside as well. These are gonna be your victory points, which you'll be using throughout the game to uh, be able to win. So for this specific one here, your objective is to get one of these stars and then discard six of uh, between either the blue or the red options here to escape and jump over, or to just get into the facility and jump over the fence. All right, so to begin the game, we went ahead and set our suspicion to zero and our visibility to one, as well as made sure that all the cards are here. And we have this little uh, extra little alert symbol here that could be used at certain periods of time. I've also went ahead and added this to the board, which will normally be there, but this just is going to be an increase in the difficulty in order to remove these. And we're trying to remove these off the board by either putting them into our deck or our deck or simply putting them into our avoided obstacles pile without suffering any damages. So to start with, I've gone ahead and drawn my cards here and we don't need this anymore, we can move this away. And I can play any of these cards and they all are, we're gonna be using the top portions of the cards. So whenever cards are played, they're from the top portion. Whenever they're affecting us, they're gonna be the bottom portion here. So these cards here can be into my, our deck, but it's only gonna function with the top here. So this here we have one, 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 but it says for this one, you can discard attention uh, to lose two suspicion. So there's tension, I can play this card for one and I can discard this to lose two suspicion, but right now I'm at zero, so I wouldn't do that. I can discard one of these red to gain two. And uh, I think that's what I will do. Oh, I can also gain two, two suspicion to draw a card, which could be useful if I want to destroy something. The cost to remove the cards are gonna be here. This is a five, and this is a four. Four, 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 and three. But here, it's gonna cost an additional blue and then two blue and two blue for these cards here, because basically these are the um, avoidance and basically more difficult to get to these guys. So right now we're kind of worrying about these guys because after we're done playing our cards, all these are gonna shift over and then these guys might end up going here. We don't want that to happen though because it's gonna increase our suspicion marker by there. Um, and also if we eliminate them by putting them into our, our deck, this could happen as well. So what we'll do here is I guess we'll play this card here for one and we'll discard this one here, which will give us two. So that's three total. And then we're gonna have four and we'll just go ahead and do this one for five. So now we can go get rid of this one five or this one here. This one's good because it gives us two, and these are all only, only ones, but this one's better because it gives us two and we gain a red whenever we use this against a specific type of card. And the card's type is gonna be labeled right down here. So this was a little gate here. So this is the one we wanna get. So we're gonna take this for our five and we're gonna put it into our discard that is basically going to eliminate the card. And then after we've eliminated the card, um, uh, we have nothing left to play in our hand, we're going to simply move the deck down. Now here's a couple interesting things as well how this works. If you choose not to eliminate the card and you just want it to be basically stopped, you can go ahead and flip it over as long as you pay the cost. Then you could choose between the two to move over here. If you do go ahead and eliminate the card, then this one is going to actually move over. And if the cards are neither eliminated, then the one that is closest in slot one will move over. So we've gonna take that one. So this one is actually gonna go, it has to go. And it says one suspicion. So this card has moved through and gained one suspicion. Once you go ahead and use that, you're gonna flip that face down. And these cards are all going to move over a slot and a new card is going to be drawn. After that, you're gonna go ahead and draw your cards again, and four more, and put them into your hand. If you have ever the need to draw a card and you don't have a card, you're gonna shuffle your deck or your discard pile into your deck. And once again, you will continue until you're able to get eight points, which is gonna allow us to beat that first scenario stage, right? Right now, the highest we're gonna get in our hand to begin the game is gonna be six. So adding that cop card, or this, the uh, small crowbar, is gonna give us plus two more. So at this point, we only need one more that's with two if we can get lucky and get it. But yes, that's why we're deck building at the same time. Now also, there's gonna be certain aspects throughout the game, and these are all the ones that are listed here. Threat means that it's always active, and when that happens, you're gonna put it on a card. For instance, right there is a threat, and it says whenever a badge card is is avoided, which means it goes in here, I have to gain a suspicion. So this is always activated while it's on the board. 
This one here, which is the green one, is reveal, and it's activated whenever the obstacle is placed face up. So this one says reveal if there's another one of these surveillance cameras. Uh, all of them uh, in sight basically increase your visibility by one, which will actually give you more suspicion, and in certain scenarios will actually have you lose the game. So you have to be very careful. And then you've got stuff like near, if it is in this location over here, or chain, if there's one here, it'll chain with all the rest of them in the line. Uh, oversight, if it actually gets through, it could suffer some kind of damaging effect and in certain cases actually make you lose the game as well. And eliminate when you put them into your discard pile to be added to your deck, it'll cause something to happen as well. There's other cards in your deck they will be able to use, like such as preparing or to sidestep or to target, but you can look at those more carefully if you'd like. Um, so that is a basic idea of the game. You will also sometimes be gathering certain things like, oh, I don't know, equipment like this one right here. And if you do, you're gonna be able to put it here instead of eliminating it into your graveyard. You can actually choose to put it here if you'd like, and it's going to let you use it. Uh, this one says discard this card from play to gain one red. So it's kind of a bonus as well as costumes. But yeah, once you're able to get eight, you're gonna be able to remove this card here, gain your one star. And the next time you get six, you'll be able to jump over. And then you'll have the option of going to either stage A, 2A or stage 2B. And based on the decision you make is what's going to happen next in the game Blind Chronicles Agent Decker. All right, let's go up and talk about it. So a couple caveats about the game. Well, as you know, now that you can actually put equipment down onto your character and you can use those throughout the game and everything trails as far as the suspicion and the visibility. And as you play throughout the game, it's going to have different things. Like for instance, on stage 2B, if you have suspicion of 50 or more, you lose. Or if your visibility is at four and you need to increase it, you lose as well. Or suspicion of 50 uh, or more stage A, but if the angry guard gets through, and that can and actually he has, the oversight ability goes through and he gets you stop you don't stop the anger guard you're going to lose that way and there's going to be other different uh, win and loss condition as you continue but like here stage c it tells you if you have the suspicion of 50 or more and or if the you eliminate the gang's representative you also lose so you have to be very careful with both of those as well so that is kind of the idea of the game what's also unique too is there's a full-on storyline to this game you're trying to get into this facility you're trying to find this missing scientist and you're gonna have options and choices and i don't have it with me but the pdf was explaining like why you make these choices and why you want to go and do this or do that and so that's going to give you the ability to choose which way you want to go throughout the mission and how you kind of accomplish these goals and which cards you're going to be using to deal with as well to gain into your deck for the next mission. So let me go ahead and tell you what I think about the game now. So Blight Chronicles Agent Decker is kind of this little like Mission Impossible slash kind of Metal Gear Solid style game. You're basically playing a solo deck building game that is going to kind of incorporate this legacy aspect to it and where you have to make choices and whatnot. So that has, there, there, there is to say there's the replayability factor, right? Uh, how many times are you going to play this game? Oh, there's going to be a certain amount of times you can play this game because there's a certain amounts of choices you can make. I obviously only have the prototype, so I'm only able to play a couple times to get all the different uh, options and choose the different ways to play the game. But there's going to be a lot more options in the other games. And I think what's cool too is it might might be, and if it is, this is a good thing, that you can use the board and all that and have the different agents for the different stuff and like the different cards, but you can still get all the main stuff, so you get little expansion packs to increase that. But the legacy aspect of the game is cool. I like the fact that I have choices and there's a story to it and it feels very immersive and engaging. It's something I can sit down and play comparatively to a game of solitaire or whatever. This is way more entertaining, way more engaging, and I like, I think it's definitely for those deck builder lovers that want to play deck builder, but don't have maybe Ascension's online tablet or whatever, you can actually sit down and just go ahead and play one of these like this. I also think this game would work great as an app as well. I like the fact that everything trails as you go from different um, st scenes to, or stages to different stages. And it kind of all is going to be based on the choices you made before as to what's going to be more likely for you to fail. Like, okay, maybe your deck's not so good, but you're able to clear it super fast. But now, because you've made those choices, it's going to be a lot more difficult to stop that guard from getting through. And there is you're going to be your blunder. You're going to have to start again. But the game's challenging, but it's not too challenging either. It's going to allow you to progress, which is nice. Now, if you make mistakes, you're going to be able to start over again, and that's okay. But also, the deck building aspect kind of is pushed in there as well and you can kind of set it down and play again later the art style is cool i like that uh, i think maybe some background would be nice i know this is kickstarter so i don't know exactly what this is going to be if this is final or not but it's okay in my opinion i think if they added some extra stuff to it would be kind of cool but the board is cool all the different cards are cool i like the fact that you're going to have different things that engage you and what's going to activate certain times the near the oversight the eliminate the, um, the reveal all these things are really cool using the clear camera paths and whatnot and 
you do feel like you're an agent going through these, and it's really weird to me, because I was playing, I'm like, wow, it does feel like I've got to avoid this camera, but it's not as important as avoiding this guard. And if I can't trip up this card, maybe this guy has got a crowbar, I can take that instead. I'm like, oh, i, I got to pick this or that. And oh, I can use this equipment for later, for the next round. You have to think ahead, too, because if you got to be fully stacked for the next available thing. And if you're not, it's going to be more challenging. But the game is good. It's very fun. I really enjoy this game. I don't play a lot of solo games, so you know, take my, my word with a grain of salt, I guess. But for me, I really, really enjoyed this game. It's a game I'm definitely going to play again, and I, especially if I get the Kickstarter uh, full copy, then I'm going to be playing through the entire campaign because the story itself was really cool as well. So if you like that aspect, if you like solo games specifically, if you don't like solo games, this is like... Not why even watching this, but <laughs> if you like solo games and you like deck builders, this is definitely one I would suggest checking out. Blight Chronicles Agent Decker. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out Blight Chronicles Agent Decker. It's going to be on Kickstarter in the description below if it's not already there. It'll be coming soon. As well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And uh, if you want to get some of those giveaways, I think they've got Kingdoms Earn going on right now in the Gate of Our Lives, so go ahead and check those out. As well as checking out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, as well as E-Win Gaming Chairs. If you want a gaming chair for whether it's video gaming or board gaming, 10% off using my code UNFILTERED in the link below in the description. All right, guys, thanks so much. And as always, I greatly appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you next time.